What's up guys, my name is Liam and today I'm going to be swapping out the switches on one of my favorite mice. Currently my favorite switches are the transparent Huano blue shell pink dots, so let's check it out. Everything that I'm using today, I'm going to put down in a link in the description below. That way if you're interested in doing this yourself or if you'd like to follow along with this video. So here are the transparent blue shell pink dot Huano switches. I picked these up from Osmod Shop. And then uh, today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be modding Jewel's HTX to 4K version. Just to give you guys some transparency, when you do switch out switches, on mice, not every mouse is gonna perform the same. Some mice perform differently. There has been times where I have put uh, switches in mice. I thought I was gonna perform better than they did and they didn't. So let's go ahead and check it out. Let's start out with the sound test here and see what we're looking like. All right, so let's go over the tools that I'm gonna to be using today. Starting out, I have a Weller soldering iron. This is a 40 watt soldering iron. When you guys are soldering on a smaller PCB, you generally wanna be within like the 15 to 25 watt range. This soldering iron, it does come with a sponge. The first thing that you wanna do before you get started is you're gonna to wanna to wet down the sponge and then you're gonna to wanna to completely wring it out. So you don't want any water sitting in the sponge. You just need the surface to be nice and moist. This helps you clean the tip of your soldering iron. Um, you do wanna be very careful with the soldering iron, just a cautionary tell. Um, if you use one without a stand or anything like that, you run a risk of hitting the cord, knocking off your desk. If this lands on your carpet, it's gonna melt your carpet and just completely ruin it. Please do be safe or make sure that you're in an environment where you don't have to worry about that. Maybe in a garage or something like that where you don't have to worry about um, your soldering iron falling on the carpet. To get started, I like to turn it on. And the reason I like to turn it on is because you want it to get hot. And again, like I said, this, this version is a 40 watt soldering iron. So what I'll do is I'll start it up and I'll leave it on the highest setting. And then after the soldering iron has heated up, I'll generally drop it down to about three or just under three because obviously since this is a 40 watt soldering iron, we're shooting for the 15 to 25 watt range since we're gonna be soldering on a smaller PCB. This is an electric screwdriver right here. Uh, this is an IFU screwdriver. This kit looked appealing to me on Amazon. It comes with tweezers, which you will be needing for uh, helping you remove the switch. And it also comes uh, you know, with an assortment of uh, plastic pry tools. And then you'll need uh, a soldering suction tool to help remove the solder off the PCB. This is the solder I'll be using for this project today. And then uh, you don't have to, but I do use uh, Zippo lighter fluid uh, to remove the gates. I do have a little rubber mat here. You don't, this isn't necessarily, you know, necessary, but I just like to have it just for safety precautions, helping me keep screws organized and stuff like that. You wanna open your switches and you wanna inspect them. So you just wanna actuate the switch. Both of these switches seem like they're fine and like they're operating as they should be. So we'll go ahead and just set these off to the side and these are the switches that we're gonna put in. So with this mouse, I'm not sure if there are screws on the top and the bottom. Sometimes they only have screws on the bottom of the mouse. I'm gonna actually remove the bottom skate. That way at that point, I'll find out if it's even gonna be necessary for me to remove the top skate or not. And you know what, it does actually look like I do see a screw hole up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the top skate. All right, so for the HTX, it does look like they actually have screws in both the top and the bottom. And as far as I can tell, these are just miniature Phillips screwdriver heads. All right, guys, so I got the screws out. Everything's going great so far. So now I'm gonna try and pry the plastic shell off the bottom here. Uh, since I can see inside, I am gonna look inside of here and inspect it and make sure that you know there's nothing that I could see that's gonna be an issue when I'm pulling this apart. And as what I do see on this mouse is in the sides here, I do see some clips. So it looks like the base is actually clipped into the side of the shell. I'm gonna pull up on the front right here since there's a little groove that I can get my finger in there. Okay, so here's what the inside of the mouse looks like. And there was a clip on the rear, um, on the left, and on the right side of the mouse. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna detach the ribbon cable, and this ribbon cable is actually attached to the side buttons. So what you'll need to do is there's a little black piece right here that you'll need to pull up on. And as you're pulling up on that little black piece, what that's gonna do is that's gonna unlock for you be able to be able to remove the ribbon cable there. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the battery from the PCB. All right, and there you go. So we got the battery disconnected from the PCB. Looking at the PCB here, it looks like we have four screws. We have one here, one here, one here, 
and one here. So just so you guys know, you do wanna be careful when you're touching the PCB. The first thing that you always wanna do is you wanna disconnect the battery immediately because you can have static electricity on your hands. Um, you know, you might wanna ground yourself before you actually start doing this procedure. That way you don't have to worry about shorting anything. Uh, you know, not a major concern, nothing that I've ever personally had ex an issue with, but just to be safe. And then what you'll want to do is, uh, as you're handling the PCB, try not to touch the electronics with your hands or anything like that. Again, just to be safe. These are just slight precautions that you want to keep in the, in the back of your mind as you're working on this. Try and be as easy with it as possible. When you are touching the PCB, try and hold the sides. Try not to ever touch any of the components or anything like that, just for safety. All right, so let's go ahead and get the PCB out of here so we can get this on the way. All right, so we got that unscrewed, so let's go ahead and take the PCB out. And it just pops off nice and simple, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this base to the side. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna bust out uh, my helping hands. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take note of where the switches are, and I'm gonna flip the PCB upside down. And as you can see here, these are gonna be the terminals here for the switches. So just make sure that you get a good visual idea on where those are gonna be. And then next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure the PCB upside down. And as you can see, I tried to use the clamps on the edge of the PCB. That way it's not touching any of the electronic components. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to apply some solder to the leads. And if you guys can see here, there's no solder on this bottom lead right here, but there is solder on these two top leads. Again, I'm gonna make sure that I turn down my soldering iron and make sure my soldering iron is at proper operating temperatures. All right, then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna check the tip of your soldering iron. Now, this is what the wet sponge comes in play for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly rub my soldering iron on each end of the sponge to make sure that I got the tip nice and clean there. And you wanna do this um, as quickly as you can. Do not leave the soldering iron there for too long because if you leave the soldering iron there too long, it can get too hot, it can damage your board, it can damage the switch. Ideally, you only wanna leave it on there for a few seconds. All right, and I would say I left that on there for about five seconds. All right, so the reason that we're applying extra solder right now is it makes it easier to get the switches out. All right, and I wanna show you guys really quickly what I'm gonna be doing here is you can see that there's these little holes here in the side of the switch. So as I'm gonna be soldering the terminals, getting them nice and hot, um, I'm gonna use these pliers right here to pull the switch out through the bottom. And I'm gonna stick these pliers in this little hole right here. All right, so here we have the first switch. And just really quick, the reason that I, I usually use these tools is what I typically do is you typically wanna cut the terminals um, before you desolder it. As you can see there, I kind of struggled a little bit to remove that last switch. And I've actually decided not to do it in this case. And the reason I decided not to do it is because it's like I said, I'm not sure how these other switches are gonna perform in this mouse yet. So I didn't wanna do anything that was too destructive to where I wouldn't be able to revert back to these switches um, if I couldn't, I do have another set of switches that I can also try if I'm not, if I don't like these ones here. But uh, again, that's, that's one of the main reasons why I decided not to cut the terminals uh, on the edge to make it easier to, to, for the switch to be removed. So on to the other side. All right, and, and here we have the last switch. I'm gonna use the solder suction tool to clean up the extra solder that I've put on the board, and I'm gonna try and clear these holes up that way and get the new switch in there nice and easy. First, I'm gonna clean my soldering iron tip to make sure it's nice and clean. All right, guys, so as you can see there, it looks like we got those uh, holes for the switches nice and clean. 
So it looks like the board is ready to place our new switches inside. All right, so what I like to do now, guys, is I like to place the switch inside the PCB, and um, I use one of the extra clamps that my helping hands came with. And if you're gonna be doing this method, just make sure that when the switch is placed in the PCB, that it's pressing firmly up against the PCB and it's flat. Um, one thing that you can come, uh, one problem that you can come across if you're using like a clamp or something like that, is it can tilt the switch to one side and make it lopsided. So if you are gonna use this method or something similar, like I said, just make sure that the switch is seated flat and it is sitting pretty snug up against the PCB. When you're applying solder back onto the board, you don't want to overdo it. You want to get just enough on there so that it completely surrounds the terminal and it covers the PCB up. But don't don't try not to do too much excess of it. Again, try not to stay on here too long because if you do, you can burn up your switch and break your switch or damage the PCB. All right, guys, so there's the first switch installed. Um, looks pretty decent, worked out pretty well. I uh, try to make that as quick as possible. So let's move on to the next switch. And again, just really quick, guys, I know that I'm installing these upside down, but make sure you are installing the switch the proper way as you're placing it in. So I know that this is the top of the PCB. This, the, top, the switch needs to be up here towards the top. So when I'm installing it, I'm installing it in this direction. All right, guys, so I got the switch in there nice and secure, so I'm going to go ahead and solder it. When you're soldering, you want to make it nice, quick, and clean. If you accidentally apply too much solder, you can use the suction tool just to suck off the excess solder, but I highly recommend not playing around with this too much. You want to do this really quick and clean, just get in and out quickly. All right, guys, so here's the soldering job that we did right here right here and then right here. And as you can see, again, I'm trying my best not to touch the electronic components. I'm trying to stay on the outside of the PCB. Okay, now I'm just going to inspect my work and make sure that the switches look like they're seated in there properly. They're nice and flat up against the PCB. All right, everything looks great. So let's go ahead and throw this back in the mouse and see how it sounds. And now since I'm all done soldering and everything looks great, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my soldering iron. And before I place this back in the board, I'm just gonna double, I'm just gonna test the switches really quick, make sure they're still performing as they should be. Okay, so now that we got the PCB secured back into the base of the mouse again, uh, we just wanna double check over everything, make sure everything looks good. And then we're gonna to wanna to connect the battery connector back into the PCB. And make sure you hear a nice audible click and it's seated in there properly. All right, so next you're gonna to wanna to secure the side button ribbon cable back into the PCB. And you'll see here there's two sides. There's a blue side, that's the back side and then the front side has the terminals in it. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to place the silver side with the connectors facing down towards the bottom of the mouse to make sure that it's making a connection. Okay, so when you're placing the cable in, you can you can definitely fill it, slide in uh, nice and simple, and it definitely bottomed out. And then what you wanna do is you wanna push in on the black backing right here to make sure that the cable ribbon is locked in place and it gets a it gives you a nice click when you know it's secured and fastened it helps if you go in leaning the base of the mouse in towards the side of the side buttons first so lean it in and do the side button side first like that and then you just have to push it to the side to make sure that you can get clearance for the scroll wheel there All right, so now we have the base of the mouse snapped into place correctly all the way around the edge of the mouse. I like to double check the switches, make sure everything feels great. Uh, check the side buttons, 
make sure everything's in line and performing perfectly as it should. I'll also make sure the mouse powers on and off and I'll do a quick test on my computer just to make sure it is working, everything's moving around and functioning properly. And then at that point, then I'll put the skates on the mouse. And the last step is just to secure the screws back into the bottom of the mouse before we put our feet on. All right, guys, and I'm just absolutely loving these switches inside of this mouse. These switches actually feel a lot lighter than the other ones did. I'm actually really satisfied with how this turned out, so I'm going to go ahead and leave things how they are. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. Again, I'm going to use links to everything that I've used in this video down in the description below. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel. And aside from that, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.